Okay, this is going to be a, a simple demonstration of the Herco WinMax software, the mill software. I'm going to do a simple little part. Um, what I like to do is, I'm going to assume we have a 6 inch by 6 inch square piece of aluminum, 1 inch thick. We're going to mill a quarter inch deep by quarter inch wide frame all the way around the outside of the part. We're going to mill a half inch deep circle in the middle of the part with an island in the, in the middle of that. And we're going to drill and tap a bolt circle. Then I want to use the same geometry that I used to create those features to show how we can chamfer uh, the same geometry. So let's get started. Since our graphics is solid model capable, what we're going to do first is set up some stock geometry. So I'm going to go to my stock geometry tab. I have three options here. I can either do a box, a cylinder, or I can import a STL file to be used as my stock geometry. In this case, I'm going to use a simple box. I want to say yes. I want to manually size my stock. And it gives me some options here for stock size. So the length of that stock is going to be 6 inches in X, 6 in Y, and 1 inch thick in Z. Now it, the control will automatically assume the front left corner is 0, but I can use these reference tabs here to move 0 anywhere on the part that I wish. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the front left corner for now, but just again, we could uh, position that anywhere that we wanted on the part. The next thing we want to do is go through and set up some tools. As I create these tools, I'm going to create speeds and feeds with each individual tool, and I can also associate different speeds and feeds by material. What this gives me the ability to do is create a library of tools that a less experienced operator can pull from and be able to be effective on the shop floor. So the first thing we do is we type in the tool number, tool 1 in this case. We determine what kind of tool it is. We're going to say this is an end mill. It's a half inch end mill, so 0.5. And for speeds and feeds, we can either do direct RPM and inches per minute feed rates, or we can do surface footage. I'm going to do 800 surface feet. Feed per flute. Let's do 5,000 chip load per tooth, and we're going to do a three flute end mill. Now notice that it calculated the feed and the RPM, the inches per minute feed and the RPM, and they have a CAL next to them. That tells me that those were calculated values and they weren't entered manually. So I'm going to continue to set these up. <clears throat> Tool 2 is going to be a drill. It's going to be a 5 16 drill, but if I didn't know the decimal for that, anywhere on this control that I can put in a number, I can do it as a math function. So 5 divided by 16 is 3125. So it did that for me. Put some speeds down here, 450, uh, 3.5 per flute. Just continue this until we're done. I'm going to do number, tool number 3 will be a tap. Notice we also have some selections over here on the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to select tap. Now I know this is going to be a 3816 tap. I could just type in the, the diameter and threads per inch or if it's an odd size tap or a metric tap that I don't know the actual value, I could simply select it from this menu here. As I said, ours is going to be simple. It's going to be 0.375 diameter, 16 threads per inch. We'll give this a speed of 800, and we don't need any coolant. And the last tool I'm going to set up is a chamfer mill. So tool 4 is going to be a chamfer mill. It's going to be 0.5. And down here it asks a few more questions. Angle and tip diameter. Anytime that I don't know what something is being asked for, I can hit the More, Advanced Tool Settings, and that will take me to this screen. As I highlight each of the fields, it shows me what it's asking for. So the tip diameter, we're going to put in 0 0.02. And the angle, sometimes it wants an included angle, here it wants per side. So 45 degrees per side for a 90 degree chamfer tool. Now that's set up all of our tools. So now we can go out to our part programming and begin to write the part. Program the part. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mill that frame around the outside of the part. So I'm going to do that under the milling tab here. Lines and arcs would be an arbitrary shape, but anything like circles, frames, 
facing, things like that have can cycles associated with them. And we're going to do a frame. So I'm going to select frame. And I just start, out to fill out, start to fill out the information as it asks for it. It wants to know one of the corners of the frame. Any one of the four corners, whichever one's most determinable by my print. In this case, my front left corner is zero. I'm going to use that. So I'm going to start with 0.25 in in both directions. Now it wants to know the length of the, of the frame in X and in Y. Well, we know we've got a quarter inch on either side, so that's a half inch. Our material is six inches, so that means that this frame is going to be five and a half inches. If I didn't know that, or if that wasn't so easy to figure out, we could put, do this as a math function. So six minus 0.25 minus 0.25 enter gives me the same value. Our Z start is our rapid to position above the part. So we're going to wrap it to 100 thousandths above. That's where we begin our feed. And we're going to go down to a final depth of 250. I'm going to break the corners, each corner of this frame, by 20 thousandths just to deburr it. But I could also <clears throat> independently control each one of those corners. Each corner is numbered, and I could put a radius of any size, or I could uh, select a line. and put in an ang a length and a value, or a, an angle. So we're going to stay with arc. And we need to select a tool. I know it's tool number one. I could simply type that in, or I can select from the list. And by clicking the top of these columns, I can sort things by type. So I can, by tool, by number, whatever. So we know we want the number one half inch end mill, so I select that puts it in the program, and you see that it brought in some speeds and feeds. It didn't do a peck depth or a plunge feed simply because I didn't set that up in my tool. I don't need to peck anything a quarter inch deep, but I do want to put a plunge feed of 10 inches a minute. Now what kind of frame is this? We have on, which is no cutter comp. The center of the tool will follow around the part. We have inside and outside that will keep the tool to the inside or outside of our frame. It will automatically blend on and blend off. The value that it blends on and off will be set by parameter. We have inside and outside tangent <clears throat> also stays to the inside or outside of the, of the programmed frame. However, it will not blend. In case of an O-ring groove, for example, we can't have those blend moves. And Then we can make this a pocket boundary or an island. In our case, it's just going to be an outside frame. Let's go to our graphics draw and we should get a frame around the outside of our part. We can rotate this part around, we can look at it in transparent or opaque. A lot of things we can do with this with this part as we um, look at it in graphics. So let's go back to the program. We're going to go to our next block and that's going to be a mill circle. So milling circle. The center of the circle will be the center of the part, so 3 inches and 3 inches in X and Y. The radius, let's make this a 4 inch circle, so it's going to be 2 inch radius. Point 0.1, let's, wrap it, or let's uh, cut down to a half inch final depth. We're going to use tool 1. This time it's going to be a pocket boundary. I am going to want to peck this. I don't want to do a half inch in aluminum all at once, and I'll have a plunge feed of 10 inches a minute back to our draw screen and now we'll have a frame and a circle. Now here on this plus and minus I can speed up this graphics or I can slow it down. So if I want to watch it cut a little slower I can put a smaller number here if I don't care if I just wanted to get done quickly I can go all the way up to six or what we call max. Let's go back to the program. Our next block. This time we're going to drill bolt circles. So that will be under holes. We're going to do a drilling operation. I'm going to use a drill. I'm going to start at minus 0.4 because I'm going to do this inside that pocket and it's already a half inch deep. Let's go down 1.2 to break through. This is going to be tool number two. If I had a peck, if I needed to peck this, I could put a value in here. So let's do 0.3 maybe for pecks and a retract clearance of how far you wanted it to uh, uh, to peck. 
out of the hole. The next hole operation, we're going to do a tap. So we select tap operations. We're going to rigid tap because we have it available. Let's go down 750 on our tap. It's going to be tool 3. Because we're rigid tapping, we could also peck. If we had a very small tap or a very large tap, we needed to, uh, to peck that to relieve some of the stress. We could certainly do that. Next hole operation. I've told it what I want to do. I want to drill and I want to tap. Now we need to tell it where. So the next hole operation will be either a bolt circle, which is what we're going to use, locations, which will be X and Y locations, or rotary locations if I was on a rotary machine. We're going to do a bolt circle. We're going to say there's 10 holes in this bolt circle. The center is at the same as the center of the circle, so 3 and 3. I'll make it 1 inch 750, so it'll be smaller than our circle. And it, the start angle is the position of the first hole. Sometimes on a print, you will have a angle value to a specific hole, and you can call that your first hole. In this case, we want 10 equally spaced holes around the part. 0 degrees is 3 o'clock on your watch, and that's where the first hole is going to be positioned. If I know where the first hole is, and I go counterclockwise, I know where the second, third, fourth, and so forth, all the rest of the holes are. Let's say on my print, holes 3, 7, and 9, they don't exist on my print. I have an array of holes, but they don't go all the way around. So I physically put in the number of the hole that I want to skip. And now when I draw this, <clears throat> I will get drilled and tapped holes with those holes being skipped. You can see that hole, here's hole 1 at 3 o'clock. 2, 3 is missing, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9 are missing. Okay, so now let's chamfer the outside of this frame and the inside of this circle. So we go back to our program. We're going to hit the Review button. Review gives me almost a table of contents in a book type layout of my program. I'm going to highlight these two blocks because I want to reuse them. It's very easy to program another mill in another circle, another frame in another circle, but if this had been an arbitrary shape that took me quite some time to create, I don't want to have to program it again just to chamfer it. So I'm going to reuse this geometry. I'm going to copy it, paste it, and make a few changes. <clears throat> We're going to go down 30 thousandths for a chamfer. I'm going to change to a tool 4, which is my chamfer mill. I'm going to continue to cut on the outside. The next block is our mill circle. We'll go down 30. <clears throat> Use tool 4. But this is no longer a pocket boundary. It's just going to be an inside circle. Let's draw that. And there's our chamfer on the inside of that circle, the little white line there, and on the outside of this uh, frame. <clears throat> now let's say we forgot to put our island in there. Let's go back and put a pocket island in the middle of that circle pocket. So I can put an island of any shape inside of any pocket and I can put as many islands in that pocket as I want as long as the island immediately follows the boundary in the, in the program. So I'm going to highlight the holes block which currently is right after my pocket boundary and I'm going to insert a block before that. So I'm going to insert a block before milling and I'm going to do just a four-sided polygon. So go over here to the milling <clears throat> more polygon and it inserts a new block three. I can have a polygon from three sided up to as many sides as I need. I'm going to do a simple four sided polygon. The center of that polygon is going to be at three and three. I can size it by the an outer diameter, an inner diameter, or side length, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make those one inch per side. Now I have some other information here to fill out if I was cutting this polygon as a feature. However, because it's an island inside of a pocket, 
It already knows what tool to use, how deep to go, how fast to go, and so forth. It just needs to know the XY geometry of this island that it can't violate. So I, once I select Pocket Island, most of the other information goes away. So let's go back and draw this again. I'll speed it up just a little bit. Now you can see that we have a Pocket Island that we added after the fact. I'll say we want to go ahead and copy that block and chamfer it as well. We go back into our program. We're going to, in this case, copy the Pocket Island, paste it at the end of the program. First thing we're going to do is change this to an outside polygon. That brings back all the information that we didn't have before. So we're going to have a rapid to 0.1. We're going to go down minus 0 0.03, get the same chamfer we have everywhere else. We're going to use tool 4, and we've already set it to an outside. Now when I go in and draw this, I will get also the chamfer on the outside of that polygon as well. So I hope this gave you an idea of how easy the Herco program is to, uh, to manipulate. If you want to learn more, please check us out on the web at herco.com. Thanks.